Firefighters battle a small brush fire in Spring Valley, and they'll be on high alert all weekend long with extreme heat expected. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Marcella Lee in tonight for Carlo Chiquetto. A heat advisory is in effect until Saturday night, and many across the county are worried about the fire danger. News 8's Brandon Lewis reports. Yeah, Barbara Lee and Marcella, firefighters made pretty quick work of this fire in Spring Valley, limiting it to just about three acres to the side of this uh, hill here. However, firefighters are certainly on alert all weekend long because of these very hot temperatures that are on the way. Firefighters made quick work of this three acre brush fire in Spring Valley as a mixture of crews on the ground and the air did their best to extinguish the flames. There's houses in the vicinity, so if it continued to grow, that would have been a problem. It happened near the Purdue treatment plant at the Sweetwater Reservoir, an essential building that had plenty of essential defensible space. They had good clearance around it, and fortunately we were able to stop it before that became a real issue. That's exactly what the Scripps Ranch Civic Association is hoping to replicate in their neighborhood. City workers were approved to start thinning brush in more than 60 of the canyons that snake through the area. Many contain dry brush that leads to homes. It isn't uh, a matter of if uh, there will be another fire, it's a matter of when, uh, and especially in Scripps Ranch. The area was devastated by the Cedar Fire in 2003, so many homeowners know the importance of the project. It's expected to take months because the city must pause work for nesting season and a biologist must carefully select the right vegetation to remove. They identify any native plants and species that uh, should not be touched, um, and they identify what needs to be removed, uh, thinned, and they also work on ladder fuels. Meanwhile, with more hot temperatures on the way, everyone is asked to remain vigilant on the dangers of wildfires. These are one of those times where the temperatures are higher. It's going to be harder to catch these fires. The fuels are drying out, and they're going to continue to dry out through the summer. So we really need everybody to just be safe in anything they do. Cal Fire says, as always, it's their goal to try to keep these wildfires from spreading beyond 10 acres. This one capped at just about three, so well within that limit. And of course, they're asking everyone to do their part by quickly reporting any site of fire that they may see. We'll go ahead and send it back to you. All right. Brandon, thanks. And as we mentioned, that heat advisory is in effect across the county through Saturday night. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is standing by with just how hot it could get. Carlene? That's right, Marcella. We are talking about some very hot temperatures that are in our forecast. So just taking a look at how we shaped up for today, and then that's because that advisory is now in play. So that heat advisory all the way until Saturday night, as you mentioned. We had highs today, 92 degrees for Escondido, 99 degrees today for Ramona. Also 100 degrees for Valley Center. Campo at 105 actually broke a record. That previous record was 103 set in 1972. So the heat advisory will keep going all all the way until Saturday night. Highs for the mountains above 90 degrees up to 100 degrees in spots as well as inland valleys 92 plus and could get up to about 102 in spots and that's very likely as we go through the next couple of days the hottest temperatures are expected for tomorrow. Still talking about that excessive heat warning in play for the desert highs near 120. Taking a look at those highs for tomorrow you're looking at the century mark for Ramona as well as Alpine. All the details ahead. Back to you, Barbara Lee. There are now 28 community outbreaks linked to COVID-19 in San Diego County over the past seven days. That is four times the trigger number of seven. The county today reported five new outbreaks, all of them in restaurant bar settings. There were also 381 newly confirmed cases out of more than 8,200 tests. That's a positive rate of 4.6%. It is below the 14-day rolling average of 5.6%. The number of cases is now up to 28,668. More than 21,000 people have recovered. The number of deaths rose by 6 to 558. San Diego businesses impacted by COVID-19 will be getting some financial help soon. The U.S. Department of Commerce awarded more than $38 million in coronavirus relief money to be distributed across Southern California, with San Diego and Chula Vista getting about $1.8 million of that. That money will be used to set up a revolving loan fund for businesses with the hopes that they can rebound from the coronavirus pandemic.
A Kearney Mesa church has received a cease and desist order from the county as the facility continues to hold services. Awaken Church on Balboa Avenue held another gathering last night. The county says the church did not measure up to the guidelines. Although the service was outside, there appeared to be little social distancing and almost no one was wearing a face covering. The church says that masks were available to everyone, but organizers did not make people wear them. Local leaders in the Latino community are calling out the county for its low number of Spanish-speaking contact tracers. The county says it is aiming to hire more contact tracers that represent the Latino community that's been hit the hardest with local positive cases. But activists say it's too little, too late. News 8's Heather Hope has the story. Addressing disparities in contact tracing here in Skyline, local activists and Hispanic leaders met to call out the county on lack of adequate contact tracers in the Latino community. We know there is a disproportionate impact of COVID, particularly in the Latino community. San Diego County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says county leaders are working to hire contact tracers who match the demographics of our positive COVID-19 cases. We know that we have a ways to go to fulfill this and we are working and engaging with community groups. We are doing outreach uh, to get more applicants, to get more Spanish speakers into the process. This statement coming after the Chicano Federation of San Diego County released this chart showing the contact tracer and investigator hires. 47.3% are white and 25% are Hispanic Latino. That's 144 Latino contact tracers of a total of 565 hires. With Latinos most impacted by this pandemic, making up 61% of the region's confirmed cases, the Chicano Federation says the county lied to them and told them repeatedly that the county was working diligently to hire people from the community. Our role is to hold our leaders accountable because our community is suffering and people are dying. Also saying the county is doing too little too late. There's no excuse for these delays. This is a matter of life and death. Former California State Assembly member Lori Saldana joined with Shane Harris's People Alliance for Justice in a media briefing calling out the county's contact tracing response. Stop reacting and be proactive. Martin Arias of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce says it's a struggle for his own parents. When they get a phone call, they're automatically, you know, hesitant to answer any questions just because of the fact that they don't know who's on the other side of the line, especially if they don't speak Spanish. The county has a contact tracing goal of investigating at least 70% of new cases in 24 hours, but became overwhelmed as cases spiked in early July. The county released this statement in part, we are reaching out to our community partners in Latino communities to recruit more Latino contact tracers. As you know, the staff assigned to contact trace is just under 200. The high and rapid demand for adding over 500 more is still in progress. We will refocus our matching the ethnicity of contact tracers with those testing positive. It's good that now they're doing that. The Chicano Federation did speak with county leaders today and are hopeful of more Hispanic hires. Based on the conversations we've been having with them today and some of the plans that, that they're that they're working on, you know, we, we are definitely optimistic about the fact that there will be change coming. Heather Hope, News 8. Days of tributes to a civil rights icon have come to an end. Today, Representative John Lewis was laid to rest. Michelle Miller was at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta and has more on the longtime congressman's final farewell. The casket of Congressman John Lewis left the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta following his funeral service. He, as much as anyone in our history, brought this country a little bit closer to our highest ideals. Former President Barack Obama delivered the eulogy for the civil rights icon who risked his life again and again fighting for justice. On inauguration day in 2008, 2009, um, he was one of the first people I greeted and hugged on that stand and I told him, this is your day too. Former presidents George W. Bush and Bill Clinton also paid tribute. He got into a lot of good trouble along the way. We live in a better and nobler country today because of John Lewis. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi remembered her longtime colleague. We always knew he worked on the side of the angels, and now he is with them. Ebenezer Baptist Church was where the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. preached. He resided here. This is also Congressman Lewis's home church. It's where he married his beloved wife, Lillian, and where so many are now saying their goodbyes. Let's remember him today, and let's recommit tomorrow to standing together and fighting together and voting together. 
And in a final gift, John Lewis wrote an essay in the New York Times, published today, urging others to continue standing up for what they believe in. Michelle Miller, CBS News, Atlanta. When we come back, a viral claim that a supermarket chain is charging a Black Lives Matter fee. Tonight, we verify. And a local man's encounter with what he says is a great white shark in Imperial Beach. As Poway Unified officials finalize reopening plans, Poway Unified students say they want officials to consider their input. I'm Shannon Handy. I'll have that story coming up. 